Hello, my brother and sister. My home is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Welcome to this Hope Cast from the Fountain of Hope Christian Church. I am Reverend Dr. Charles F. Marshall, the senior pastor. This is a place where we encourage spiritual growth and nurture God's children to take care of self, community, and the world through Christian education, radical hospitality, authentic praise, and worship, and service. This is a day that the Lord has made, and we should rejoice and be glad in it. Let's praise the Lord. Amen. This is a day that we've not seen before. This is a day that we've not experienced before. You're able to hear me or see me or read the caption on the bottom of the screen. Guess what? You're alive. Give God some praise today. Today is a day that the Lord has made and we should rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus for this opportunity to be, be, be alive, Lord, to be here, to, to be experiencing this worship experience. Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you for keeping us through this year. Thank you for uh, keeping our families and making a way for us and providing for us. God, if there is any need that is needed for anyone that is sharing with us right now, in the name of Jesus, touch. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, heal. Right now, in the name of Jesus, provide. God, we thank you. We thank you for what you're doing and what you continue to do. And bless this worship experience that you may be pleased that it may build your kingdom, Lord, that it may lift you up, that it may help your people, empower your people, and encourage your people. Lord, we thank you. We give you honor. We give you glory. And we give you praise. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us turn in our Bibles to the book of Psalms, the 145th division. I will extol you, my God, and keep and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall extol your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. They will recount the glorious splendor of your majesty and your wondrous works will meditate. They will proclaim the might of your awesome deeds and I will declare your greatness and they shall celebrate the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. All of your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord. All of your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known all people your mighty deed, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. And the Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and give their food in due season. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call him in truth. He fulfills the desire of all who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. 
We are certainly excited that you're with us today and our prayer is that something will encourage you and empower you. If you have praise reports, we invite you to share those. If you have prayer requests, send your prayer request to fountainofhopeatl at gmail.com or you may mail them to Fountain of Hope Christian Church. P.O. Box 55039, Atlanta, Georgia, 30308. Feel free to join us any week, each week, Wednesday from 7 to 8, our Bible study. If you would like to join us, ask for the URL connection to send an email to us to fountainofhopeatl at gmail.com and we will be glad to send you a link so that you can join with us in Bible study. Our prayer is that something today will bless you. If you look on our website at www.fountainofhopechristianchurch.com, you'll see daily scripture. Uh, you can meditate on any one of those scriptures daily. There is a new one every day. You also can share in our newsletter. We have a newsletter that is on the website and we send it out each month using the listserv. If you would like to receive a copy of the newsletter, please enter your email address in this box. Hit the button that has subscribe and you will be added to our listserv and we will gladly share with you the goodness and the glory of God through our newsletter. You are watching us on YouTube. And if you'd like to be a continue to get the YouTube connection or the notices, please hit the button that says subscribe. On your screen, there's a button that says subscribe. Hit subscribe and you, you will be added to our YouTube channel on YouTube. Amen. You can join us today in being able to give. We thank each of those of you who are giving, who have given and sowed seeds into this ministry. Thank you. You are helping us to reach people around the world to build up the kingdom of God. Our prayer is that God continues to bless you. And if you'd like to give, you can give one of three ways. You can give by mailing a check or money order to Fountain of Hope Christian Church, P.O. Box 55039, Atlanta, Georgia. You can go to our website at www.fountainofhopechristianchurch.com. Give on the website, or you can go to PayPal. If you go to PayPal, you can give at PayPal, and you can enter at Fountain of Hope and give that way. For those of you who are giving, and even those of you who are not giving, let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the hearts that are willing to share their treasures with you, God, today that are sowing seeds into this ministry, that are giving into this ministry. Bless their gifts, Lord, that it may go toward the upbuilding of your kingdom. Bless the giver, that it may return to them 70 and 100 fold. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing. And even those unable to give, Lord, bless them today, that they may receive encouragement, that they may receive a word from you. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 There is a word from the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you right now in the name of Jesus for the opportunity to be at your throne yet one more time. Lord, let the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my strength, my redeemer. God, Lord, let this word go forth that it may encourage your people that it may empower your people, that they may hear from you, that they may experience your presence today as you speak to them today through me. Lord, we thank you for all that you're doing, giving you honor, glory, and praise. Ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Turn in your Bibles to 2 Kings, the fifth chapter, and we will begin the first reading at the first verse the fifth chapter of 2 Kings, the first through the 14th verse. And it reads, Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man in high favor with his master because by him the Lord had given victory to Aram. The man 
though a mighty warrior suffered from a skin disease. Now the Aramaeans on, on one of their raids had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, if only my Lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his skin disease. So Naaman went in and told his Lord just what the girl from the land of Israel had said. And the king of Aram said, go then, and I will send along a letter to the king of Israel. He went taking with him 10 talents of silver, 6,000 shekels of gold, 10 sets of garments. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, which read, when this letter reaches you, know that I have sent you my servant Naaman, that you may cure him of his skin disease. And when the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, am I God to give death or life that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his skin disease? Just look and see how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. But when Elijah, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent a message to the king, why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me, that he may learn that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and halted at the entrance of Elijah's house. Now, Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, go wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored and you shall be clean. But Naaman became angry and went away saying, I thought that for me, he would surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and would wave his hand over the spot and cure the disease. Are not Abana and Parpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? He turned and went away in rage. But the servants approached and said to him, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more when all he said to you was wash and be clean? So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan. According to the word of the man of God, his flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our message this morning is Ray Charles can see it but you can't. Ray Charles can see it, but you can't. Amen. <laughs> Ray Charles can see it, but you can't. Hallelujah. For whatever reason, some of us miss the obvious stuff over and over and over and over and over and over, over and over again. We, we miss so many blessings because we are not paying attention. We miss our breakthrough because we are focusing on the wrong thing. If you are looking at everything that's wrong, then you might miss what is right. If you're looking at everyone else's stuff, you might miss what needs to be done with you. Maybe you have some reasons, or I mean excuses, but maybe you have some reasons, but they're really excuses, for not doing what you know you need to do. You, you say there's not enough time. There's never enough time to do it. Or some of you might say you feel guilty. Uh, you're not going to do it because you feel guilty. Someone might think you are being selfish. Or you're always too tired. Strong people sacrifice their needs to meet the needs of others. So you, 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 don't, you don't focus on your needs because you are so strong because you are tending to the needs of everybody else's instead of your own. Uh, maybe you just say, okay, my circumstances won't allow me to do it, whatever that means. Guess what? I'm here to remind you today that you know what needs to be done most of the time, but you won't. Ray Charles can see it, but you can't. Naaman 
was the commander of the Aramean army. He, he, he had a family. He, he also had a problem. Naaman was a strong man, good at fighting. He could lead the, the army. He was the commander of the army. He could easily tell others what to do. He knew how to be responsible for others and make sure that the soldiers were able to fight, to win, and then return home. Naaman had a problem, though he it was very obvious. He had a problem. He, he, he had leprosy. This is when the skin changes colors. Everybody can see it. He had a visible skin disease that his money or his position couldn't fix. Hmm. Ray Charles could see it, but he couldn't. So first of all, I want to leave with you today in this message today. Watch how you treat others who may have your blessing. Uh-oh. Watch how you treat others because these others may have your blessing. Watch how you treat others who may have your blessing. We, we've established that Naaman had a problem which was very obvious to others. Naaman had leprosy, which means that everyone could see his diseases, not like flu or COVID, where you can't see it. Somebody has to tell you they have it unless you see them sweating or, or you see them, see them acting a certain way. Uh, you know, leprosy was like monkeypox, like all of those blisters and bumps that everybody can see it. Everybody knows when you have monkeypox. With leprosy, everybody knows when you have leprosy. You could see it. Naaman was very important in Aram because he was the commander of the army. Naaman had status. He had even taken a young girl who is now his servant in his house. He had taken her captive from the land of Israel, from one of their raids that they had upon Israel. Think about it. Naaman went into someone else's home and took their daughter. Naaman went into someone else's home and took their daughter, and the girl probably didn't want to leave her family. The girl probably didn't want to leave her mother and her father, but Naaman took her and now she is a servant to Naaman's wife. Naaman let this girl be a servant. Brothers and sisters, the fact remains that Naaman though had leprosy. And in spite of the fact that Naaman raided the girl's home and was a commander and took the girl from her family, in spite of the fact that the girl's family probably were hurt, they may have even been injured, uh, the fact that the family is probably missing her and they are traumatized because their daughter is gone, in spite of the fact that the girl saw Naaman and his soldiers destroy everything around what she called home. In spite of all of that, the girl noticed Naaman's disease. And the girl said to Naaman's wife, if only my Lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his skin disease. The girl noticed it. The servant who had been taken, notice if only the Lord were with the prophet, talking about Naaman, who is in Samaria, he would cure him of the skin disease. The girl was talking about Elisha, the prophet who could heal through God. The one who was cast down is the one who offers the helpful solution to the oppressor. The one who cast her down. The girl sees this problem and the solution, but Naaman can't see it. As a matter of fact, based on the text, Naaman basically had stopped looking for it. He learned to live with his leprosy. Sometimes we have issues in life and we are looking at the wrong thing. Whether you have degrees or not, or whether you have old with experience, you've been through everything and you know everything, you still may miss your blessing because you are looking at the wrong thing. Also, sometimes we may be looking at the wrong thing for so long that we just stop looking altogether, it, which may have been what is happening here in Naaman. Oh, we, we decide to just live with it, then walking to where God may have deliverance with your name on it. Ray Charles can see it, but you can't. Amen. The servant girl knew 
the God of Abraham. The servant girl knew the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. She also knew about Elisha. She knew about the woman who owed money but had nothing in the house except some jars and a little oil. She had heard about how Elisha prayed over and blessed the little oil that was in the house. And he began to pour the oil and 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 pour the oil until all of the jars were filled with oil. God moved in that situation in what seemed like a hopeless situation with no solution was already solved, that the solution was right there in the house. The oil was in the house. The oil was in the house. The jars was in the house. The woman was looking at the wrong thing. The solution was already in the house. The oil was already in the house. The woman had enough oil, though, after he filled up those jars to sell the oil, get enough money to pay her debt, and even had money left over to live off afterwards. The fact remains is that the girl that was taken captivity, the servant girl that is serving Naaman's wife that was taken from her home, amen, is the one who offers the solution to Naaman's problem. You better watch how you treat people, my brothers and sisters. Watch how you treat people. The one who you may look down on may be the one that will bring you a glass of water when you're on your deathbed. Don't mistreat the janitor in your building because he may be the person that keeps you from getting sick. Don't mistreat the servers in the kitchen. You, you, you don't know who will have to help you one day. Everyone deserves dignity and respect. The Bible also points out very clearly in Matthew 19, 30 and in Matthew 20 and 16 that things can change. The first will be the last and the last will be the first. So if just because you first today don't mean you're going to be first tomorrow. Watch those people who are first today. Uh, it doesn't mean they're going to stay first. Amen. God can turn that thing around. You might be on top today, but tomorrow you may be at the bottom because someone else will be on the top. Just think about how many empires and world leaders have been on top, and then all of a sudden they worked on top. Those who were on top either died or someone defeated them. Rome, based in Italy, became a major world force until it fell. The United Kingdom, though it's in, it has an industrial and expansive fleet at one time, it stretched over one quarter of the world, and it actually had about one third of the Earth's population. They lost their position. We mourn the key, the, the death of, of Queen Elizabeth this, 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 this week, but, but the United Kingdom was on top at one time, and then they weren't. China was once a world superpower, and then it lost its place. Now watch them again. They're starting to come back up because they're becoming the world's largest economy. There are many more who have risen to great notoriety in history, but who have also fallen. The graves are filled with people who were on top. The point is, is that you need to be careful how you treat people going up because you may need those same people when you are at your point of need. Naaman needed to help with his leprosy, but had stopped looking. It just so happens that the one who he had stolen from a family made a servant to his wife is the one who freely offered a solution to Naaman's wife for Naaman's leprosy. Not only did the servant girl come into the picture, but remember Naaman was a commander of the Aramean army who raided Israel. That's where they found the servant girl. In order to find the prophet Elisha, Naaman was going to have to go through the king of the land that he had just raided. He'd have to go back to Israel. So he ended up going to the king of Aram. Yeah, and the king of Aram wrote a letter to the king of Israel to have the prophet in Samaria heal him. He just said, heal him. He didn't even say the prophet. He just said, heal him. Naaman took some money with him. 
The text says he took 10 talents of silver, 6,000 shekels of gold, and 10 sets of garments, and Naaman knew he had to do something for the man that he had just raided, the king of Israel. And when he went to the king of Israel, the king looked at him and asked, why was he asking for the king to heal him of leprosy? The letter said, heal him of leprosy. The king said, why are you asking me? I can't heal him. The king of Israel felt Naaman was trying to pick another fight with him because he was asking him to do something that he could not do. Amen. The king said, am I God to give death the light that this man sent word to me to cure a man of his skin disease? Just look and see how he's trying to pick a quarrel with me. Oh, what is he trying to do? And the king tore his clothes. He was frustrated. How many African-Americans have nursed their slave owners and took care of their children? Ray Charles could see it, but Naaman couldn't. The girl servant saw his problem and offered up a solution. The king uh, sent him to the king of Israel, who he had once raided, and to offer up the solution. Now, Naaman had to go back through the people that he had abused. Naaman had to go through the servant girl and the king of Israel, which leads me to the next thing. The answer may not be what you expect it to be. You need to look for it. It may not be what you expect it to be. Pay attention. God can take a mess and turn it around to bless everyone involved. People are always messing up somehow and some way. God has mercy and grace on his people in spite of what they do. And sometimes they just put themselves in bad situations. What meant for what is meant for bad turns out for good. So let's see what happens in this story in this text when Elisha, the man of God, heard about the king tearing his clothes. The king of Israel tore his clothes. Elijah told the king of Israel to send Naaman to him. So Naaman goes to the prophet Elijah, and here's what Elisha's servants tell him that Elisha had said. I already told you, Naaman was a prideful man. He, he was an important man. Unfortunately, Naaman was not the smartest. For some reason, when things sound too easy, we don't want to follow the direction. How many times have you seen people take the hard road because it sounds too easy? Yeah, I heard some older folks say it like this. Sometimes the best sense is bought sense. You can tell them all day to do something. And if they don't want to do it, they're not going to do it. Uh, some others say you can lead a horse to the water, but you can't make them. Oh, yeah, you know the rest of it. Drink. Many times our solutions are so easy, but we just won't do what we know to do. Uh, don't fight. Just walk away. Some of us will fight anyway. Yeah, you've heard that before. Or be on time and you won't get in trouble. And some people will be late for their funeral. Always late. We pray this, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Some people are always miserable because they're holding grudges for 20 years. They don't know how to forgive Whoever they are holding the grudge has gone on about their life and they are still saying stuff like, I'm going to take it to my grave. You better let it go. Let those grudges go. Or the, this other advice, go to work, do your work and you'll be paid. And some people go to work and still don't do anything and still expect to be paid. Mercy. Love God with your whole heart, mind and soul and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus gave us the greatest commandment, and we still want to do what we want to do. So Naaman was the same way. Naaman pleads his case to Elisha. Elisha had sent word to him what to do. Go and dip yourself seven times in the river. And Elisha, these are very simple instructions. Seven times. It tells Naaman to go and dip in the Jordan seven times. And Naaman gets angry. He said, you know, wait a minute. Uh, what about the rivers where I'm from in Aram? Aren't they just as good? I could just dip there. Why do I need to dip in the Jordan? Uh, he said, I thought that for me, you know, you would come out and wave your hand and do whatever it is that you do and, and, and call on God and raise your hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. 
Uh, you didn't do any of that. Uh, look, he gave you instructions, Naaman. He gave you instruction. God gives us simple instructions and we won't follow the instructions. People, God's ways are not our ways. And when it comes to God's solution, don't try to understand it, just accept it. God may have you to go left to get right, amen. Somebody will get that in a minute. God may have you go left to get right. Elisha would not have been the prophet if he did everything like people thought he should do. He was following what God told him to do. Elisha was called to do things that God had called him to do. And when Naaman received specific instruction, he rejected it. He got angry and he didn't want to do it. He didn't want to follow it. So as a matter of fact, he, he, was, he wasn't going to even try to do it. And so his servants went to him. You know, they try to talk some sense into him. It's like, um, sir, uh, Mr. Naaman, uh, the Bible said they called him father, mercy. Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you have done it? He gave you something easy to do. If he told you to do something difficult, would you have done it? How much more when all he said for you was to go wash and be clean? And you didn't want to do that. Very simple. His, and, and, and fortunately, the second time after hearing it from his servants, he heard them. Unfortunately, this behavior shows up. And so many people inside and outside the church, there is always second guessing to instruction. Some people just don't like being told what to do. Some follow and others reject fellowship. One lesson I've learned along the way is that to be a good leader, you must learn to follow. Of course, if you have bad leadership, then yes, you will have to second guess your leadership. However, Elisha had a reputation for following through and doing what needed to be done. He also had a reputation for how God was working through him. So as the rest of the story goes, Naaman listened to what his servants were saying. They, and then he went down to the river, just like they asked him to. Mr. Naaman, Father Naaman, whatever you want to call him, go and dip yourself seven times in the Jordan and see what happens. He only told you to dip seven times. He didn't say 700. Seven times and wash and be clean. So Naaman went down to the river and dipped one, two, dipped again, three, dipped again, four, dipped again, five, dipped again, six, seven, done. And then, oh my Lord. 1 Samuel 15, 22 reminds us that obedience is better than sacrifice. If we obey God, there is no reason to offer up a sacrifice for sin. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Yes, which means if we obey God, we, have, we avoid having to need the sacrifice. There is no reason to offer up blood or some offering for sin for being disobedient if we are obedient. We could avoid needless pains and heartaches if we are obedient from the beginning. Naaman could have gotten his healing the first time, but he was stubborn and he refused. Oh, taste and see. Oh, somebody heard that, that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him, Psalm 34 and 8. The answer may not be what you expect it to be, but God will supply your every need according to his riches and glory, Philippians 4 and 19. So finally, after you have second guessed, know that God is, God is able. God is able. God is able. Don't ever forget that. If you forget all this other stuff I said today, remember that God is able. God's word will not return to him void. Verse 14 of this text said, so he went down, talking about Naaman, so he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan. According to the word of the man of God, his flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy and he was clean. If God said it, it will come to pass. Are you leaning and trusting in God's word? Or are you leaning and trusting in yourself? Are you believing and trusting in what God has put before you? Are you, uh, uh, are you trying to second guess God? You know your issue, you know your situation. 
At least we pray that you do. However, everyone who knows you and loves you knows your shortcoming. They can see it. They can see what you're doing and what you're not doing, even if you're ignoring it. They love you in spite of your moodiness. Amen. They, they love you in spite of your opinion. They, they love you in spite of your bad breath. They love you. Hey, oh, they love you in spite of whatever is not appealing to you. Whatever you're facing, whatever you are, God knows and God is able. Oh, touch your neighbor. Touch yourself and say, God is able, even when you can't see what the real problem is or what the solution should be, turn to God because God is able. We must trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Isaiah 26 and 4. Isaiah says, trust ye in the Lord forever. In the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. In good days, I will trust the Lord. In bad days, I will trust the Lord. In wealthy days, I will trust the Lord. In poor days, I will trust the Lord. In days when friends are around me, I will trust the Lord. And when there's no one around me, I still will trust the Lord. Open your eyes and see the goodness of the Lord. Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, my brothers and sisters, all your ways, acknowledge God. Ray Charles can see it sometimes, but you can't, but God is able. God sees, God knows, and guess what? God cares. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. For these your servants that are turning their life over right now to you, Lord, that are coming to you right now saying, Lord, I yield. They're saying they're going to turn their life around right now, this day, this very moment, to trust you now and forever. Lord, put people around them to support them, to encourage them, to strengthen them, to teach them, to, Lord, to help lead them along the way until they grow in you. Their faith grows where they can also bring others as well. Lord, those that are still on their journey, bless them and keep them and strengthen them is our prayer that you may be glorified in all that they do. Amen. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Let us share in this, this, this sacrament as we remember the, the table. That, that God has presented for us, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. And you remember that, that God created this, 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 this gift of love through offering his son, Jesus Christ, who, who offered his body and his blood for the, our remission of sins. Amen. And so as we remember this, Lord, we just thank you right now for this opportunity to come to your table. We ask that you would bless these sacraments, bless this cup, bless this bread, as we remember the death of your son, Jesus Christ, who bore our sins on the cross, who died and rose from the dead, yet sits on your right hand. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come to the table and opening this table to all who may come. We thank you. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. During the season of Passover, Jesus and the disciples uh, went into the upper room. And while in the upper room, he took the bread and he broke it and he blessed it. And he shared it among the disciples. He, he broke it and said, this, this bread represents my body, which was given for you. Take, eat. Likewise, he took the cup and he blessed the cup. And he said, this cup represents the blood that was shed for the remission of sins. For as often as you drink of this cup and eat of this bread, you remember my death until I come again. Amen. God bless you. Take drink. Amen. May God bless you as you remember this 
this great gift of love that God gave through his son Jesus Christ to the world, to you and to me. Thank you, and may God bless you. Thank you for joining us today in this whole cast. Our prayer is that something was said that will bless you and strengthen you as you make your journey. If you want to join us or need us, reach out to us. Go to www.fountainofchristianchurch.com. Now unto him who is able to keep us from home and to present us before his throne with exceeding joy to the wise God, majesty, dominion, and power. May he bless you, may he keep you, and may he